Today we are going to see a new chapter that is two-dimensional motion. We will see, we will define the meaning of two-dimensional motion and the lessons fall under this chapter. So this chapter has three lessons. The first lesson is, is about the interaction, like we interaction about interaction of vectors. We will tell us what vector and scalar means, interaction of vectors. And, and the, in section two, lesson two, we will have vector operations. How do we add? How do you multiply? How do you subtract? Vectors that's called vector operations, and at lesson three is about projectile motion. We will define the meaning of projectile motion and we'll solve some examples. And the last lesson is, is about relative motion the motion of one object relative to another object that's called the relative motion. When you say relative motion, we mean that the motion of one object relative to another object. So these two objects may be like moving in the same direction or in opposite direction. So these are the three lessons that we are going to cover under this chapter. So these are, the, I mean, four lessons. We have four lessons under this chapter or four sections. The first section is We'll introduce about vectors, we'll define what are vectors, scalars, and the examples of vectors, how do you represent vectors. In lesson two or section two, we'll see how do we add vectors, how do you subtract vectors, how do you multiply vectors. That's cross product and dot product. Under this, we'll see the dot and cross product. The dot product and cross product of two vectors. And the lesson three, we'll see projectile motion. What's the meaning of projectile motion? What are the equations that we want to study about projectile motion? What does the motion look like? How does objects which are projected at some angle with the horizontal axis, with the horizontal axis move in air? Like if you have a ball, if the ball is kicked into the air, how does it move? And this part is called trajectory. The path followed by a particle in a projectile motion is called trajectory. So we'll study the detail, the maximum height, the initial speed, the range, time, all these things. And under lesson four or section four, we will see the relative velocity of two objects which are going or traveling. If you have two cars, these cars may be like moving in the same direction. That's car A and car B, or they could be moving in or heading towards each other in opposite direction. So this car A, this car B. So in this case, we'll study the velocity of car A relative to car B, or the velocity of car B with respect to car A when they are moving in opposite direction or when they are heading towards each other. So we will study this all parts under section four. Now let's move to the first section. That is introduction to vectors. What are vectors? What does vectors look like? So what or what are the necessary things that we use to represent a vector? How do we represent vectors? So and scalars. And what are the difference between vectors and scalars. So normally in our, our previous sections, earlier sections, we define scalars and vectors. The scalars are physical quantities which have, they have magnitude but no direction. So Scalar physical quantities are quantities which have magnitude but not direction. Like the mass of the object is, which is like if I say 
10 kg it doesn't tell me like it doesn't tell us the direction of this mass it only tells us the magnitude the magnitude or the amount of matter inside this object so mass is a scalar physical quantity but scalar physical quantities are expressed by a number and a unit this is very important don't forget that any physical quantity is expressed by a number and a corresponding unit so mass is a physical quantity which has a number and unit but it doesn't have direction so it's a scalar physical quantity say time time is a scalar physical quantity if I say it's five I will count five minutes later so it doesn't tell me like where I'm going it only tells the length of the duration the duration of the time speed if I say the speed of the object is 8 meters per second just I'm s telling you the speed or how fast the object is going that is the car is traveling 8 meter distance in one second but in this case it doesn't tell us where the car is going it simply tells us the amount with which the car is traveling or it tells us how fast the car is traveling how fast the car is running so a uh, speed is a scalar physical quantity distance let's come to distance when you say distance the distance from Jeddah to Riyadh is if I say the distance from Jeddah to Riyadh is 1000 kilometer it simply tells us the path length is between Jeddah and Riyadh it doesn't tell us where like direction simply we just we are talking about the distance between these two seats the distance between these two seats is 1000 kilometer no matter where the direction is so we don't care about the direction we need what we need is the length or the amount between these two or the path length between these two seats the next kind type of physical quantity is vector vectors are physical quantities which have uh, vectors they have both magnitude and direction so in order to describe vector physical quantities we have to use or we have to add we need to have both magnitude and magnitude and direction so vectors are physical quantities with, which have both magnitude and direction when you say magnitude we mean number when you say direction where the car is going the direction is like tells us where the car is going is it going in the east in the west north or south and examples of vector physical quantities are examples of vector physical quantities are velocity now your students you have to be very careful with the terms velocity and speed when we say speed we are just talking about the magnitude with which the car is traveling but when we are talking about the velocity we have to talk about the magnitude or how fast the car is going plus where the car is going that's the direction so vector physical quantities are quantities which are expressed by a number, a magnitude, and direction. That's very important. So vectors are described by a magnitude plus direction. So vector physical quantities are quantities which have both magnitude and direction. Example velocity, force, acceleration, torque momentum electric field magnetic field all these are vector physical quantities and the other term that you have to know you students you have to know is what is the meaning of the resultant of two vectors resultant so what do you mean by resultant of two vectors like when we have two vectors we can add them or we can subtract them. So, 
the resultant of the vector is the sum of two or more vectors. When you say resultant, the resultant of two vectors is defined as this is defined as this is a vector which belongs to the sum of when you say sum when you add the sum of two or more vectors is called resultant vector. A resultant vector is a single vector that belongs to the sum of two or more vectors. So two or more vectors can be added and that is called that sum is called the resultant vector. So when you say resultant vector we mean that the sum of two or more vectors. Uh, vectors can be represented by graphic graphically. We can represent vectors graphically. So, or we can add vectors graphically. Like as I told you, when you say resultant vector, we mean that the sum of two vectors. When we have one vector, this is one vector, that's vector A. And the vectors are represented by a letter with arrow over its head. And if I have another vector B, that's B, B, they are these two vectors uh, have the same direction. So the resultant vector which is R, R is the resultant vector. I can write this as the sum of vector A plus the sum of vector B. So resultant vector is a single vector that belongs to the sum of two or more vectors. In this case, these two vectors have the same direction so that I can add them and the resultant vector will be a little bit longer. That is the sum of, this is A, and when you add B, so we'll get a longer vector, that's the resultant vector. So the resultant vector is the sum of two or more vectors. And as I told you, vectors are represented by a letter with arrow over its head. And this arrow shows direction, the arrow shows us direction and the length of the arrow shows or tells us the magnitude of the vector. So vectors are represented by a letter with arrow over its head. And the arrow shows the direction of the vector physical quantity and the length of the arrow shows us or tells us the magnitude of the vector. Magnitude. So vectors can also be represented by graphic method. We can represent them graphically. For example, in this case, if I have vector A, if this is vector A, and B is, this is vector B, this is vector B. So the resultant vector of these two vectors can be obtained by, or can be calculated by, joining the tail of first vector to the head of the second vector. You draw a line joining from tail to head. This is the resultant vector R, which is given by vector A plus vector B. That is called the resultant. This is called the tail, and this is called head. So to find a resultant vector, we draw a straight line from the tail to the head of the second vector. Or let me show you this vector. For example, a student works from his house, he's working from his house to his friend's house. That's, this is his house. This a student is right here, he was here. This is his house. So this student is going from his house to his friend's house. This is his friend's house. Then, like he wants to go with his friend to school, then he first went to his friend's house, then from his friend's house, they are going to go to, they are going to, they, are, they will go to the school together. So he went to his friend's house, and from his friend's house, he is going to the school. So from A is his, his house, from his friend's house, school. So he is going from his house to his friend's house, and from his friend's house to the school. 
So the resultant displacement of this is like, for example, this boy is going from his house all the way to his friend's house and from his friend's house all the way to the school. But he can go, this one can go directly from his house to school by using this or following this path. And this path is called the displacement. He can just he can go directly from his house to his friend's house directly following this path. So this path is called uh, like all this is called the resultant vector. The resultant vector of these two vectors. That's A and this other vector B. So a uh, so it works from his house to his friend's house, then from his friend's house to the school. The stress resultant vector displacement can be found by using a uh, ruler and protractor. That is resultant displacement. That's R. That's the resultant displacement. This is what? The resultant displacement. Or the shortest possible path. Displacement can also be defined as the shortest possible path. So vectors can be represented by graphic method. Or vector addition can be represented by the graphic method. This is the resultant vector which is given by the sum of A, vector A plus vector B. Now let me show you graphic, like short notes on vectors and scalars. How do, what do they look like? So, like as I told you, vector physical quantities are quantities which have both magnitude and scalar, whereas Scalar physical quantities are quantities which have only magnitude. For example, when you look at these two, this is one kilogram. The, the, or the temperature, look here. The temperature, this is 20 degrees centigrade. So vectors, look, these two have the same direction. They are vectors. So the resultant vector can be obtained by adding these two vectors. So we can add these two vectors. What well, about this case? We'll have three cases. Like vectors can be added if they have the same direction. Like as I told you, as I showed you before, if this is five meter in the east and this is 10 meter east, they have the same direction. So the resultant vector can be calculated by 5 meter east plus 10 meter east, which is 15 meter east. That's how we add. But if one vector is like, for example, if this is 5 meter in the east and the other one is 10 meter in the west, so the resultant vector will be 5 meter east plus 10 meter west. So in this case, we can't add these vectors because they don't have the same direction. Their direction is different. So 5 meter east is the same as negative 5 meter west plus 10 meter west. So the resultant vector will be 5 meter in the direction of West. So, the re in this case, the resultant vector will be a vector in the direction of east, but with longer lengths. That's R, which is 15 meter east. But in this case, the resultant vector is in the direction of west, but smaller in magnitude. That's 5 meter west. So, this is how we find the resultant vector of two quantities. And there is also another way where we can find a resultant vector. Like here, when the two vectors are in the same direction, here in this case, this is a case where the vectors have same direction. So here we have three cases. One, when the vectors, we have three cases. One, 
One is the first case is when the vectors have the same direction. In this case, we add them. The, this case, when the vectors have the same direction, we add them. The second case, when the vectors have opposite direction, we take the difference, we subtract. But the third one is when the vectors are perpendicular, what do we do? If the vectors are at an angle of 90 degree, for example, this one vector and this is another vector. So how do you find the resultant vector of this? If this is vector A with A, small letter A, small letter B. So to find the resultant vector, we draw a line from the tail to head. This is the resultant vector, that's R. So to find the resultant vector, we use Pythagoras theorem, that is R square, R square, we use the Pythagoras theorem, that's R square is equal to A square plus B square. So take the square of both sides. So the resultant vector R will be the square root of A square, the magnitude of A square plus the magnitude of B square under the square root. So this is the third case where the two vectors are at right angle, when they form an angle of 90 degree. Uh, the next les lesson is, uh, the next part is, part of this lesson is properties of vectors. What are the properties of vectors? What properties do vectors have? So, the first property is vectors can be added at in any order. Well, you can uh, start from this. Or, vectors can be moved parallel to themselves in the diagram. For example, if you have one vector, I just can move this, for example, if this is 3 meter north, I can move this vector parallel to it. I can move this one. I can move it. So this vector can, I can move it to, I can redraw it here. That is 3 meter north. So vectors can be moved parallel to themselves in a diagram. Or the other cases, for example, if you have one vector like this, and the other vector is this, so I can move these two vectors. I can draw this parallel to it. I can draw another vector parallel. So it's like moving this vector to this one. Or I can also move this to this. Or if you have different vectors, like moving one vector to another place, keeping its length fixed without all, without changing the direction. Vectors can move parallel to themselves in a diagram. This is very important. The second property is vectors can be added in any order. When you say uh, any order means addition of vectors is like commutative, like for example, if I have vector A, if I want to add vector A with vector B, this is the same as like adding vector B with vector A. That is called commutative property of addition of vectors. That's the commutative property of vectors. This is called commutative property. Like normally as we have commutative property for addition of numbers, like for example, 2 plus 8, is the same as 8 plus 2. This is commutative property of addition of numbers. Same way, the, there is commutative property of addition of vectors. That is, changing the position of the addends will not change the result. These are the addends. So, changing the order. Order means changing the orientation or the the, the addends, the orientation of the addends will not change the result. And this property is called commutative property of addition of vectors. So, the second property of vectors is vectors can be added in any order. The second, the third property is to subtract a vector 
add its opposite. For example, like if you have, if you want to subtract vector a, vector a, I want subtract vector a from b. For example, if I have a vector that is 30 meter, for example, this is 30 meter in the west, the opposite of this vector is negative 30 meter in the west. Or this is the same as 30 meter in the east. So, like, if you like for numbers, we have, for example, if you want to add 2 and two, if you want to get 0, the inverse of 2 is negative 2, which is 0. Same way, 30 meter west in its opposite vector is negative 30 meter west or 30 meter east. This is very important. Negative 30 meter west is the same as positive 30 meter east. Or the opposite of 30 meter west is its opposite is like adding negative to it. That's the meaning. And the third pro the fourth property is like a scalar product of vector. We call it what? The scalar product of vector. If I have a vector A, for example, if I have vector C and a scalar number two, two is a scalar and C is vector. So when you say two C, we mean that we just extending the vector C by factor of 2. For example, if this is if this is 3 meter east, so that is vector A which is 3 meter east, so 2 times vector A will be this will be 2 times 3 meter east, which is the same as 6 meter east. So that it's like a vector with a longer Length. That's so multiplying or dividing vector by vector results a vector. We get a vector, but a slightly big vector or long vector, because this color is what a positive a number greater than one. But this, if we have a vector, same vector, but if the color is one over two or half, so if this was vector c was three, then half of a will be well, half of vector a will be a vector the same vector but which is half of its original length that is 1.5 meter east this is 1.5 meter east so it is possible to multiply a vector by a scalar and the answer will be a vector so vector the scalar product of a vector is vector means that when you multiply a vector physical quantity by a constant number, we get a vector. Depending upon the scalar, the number, if the number is greater than one, we get a longer vector, greater vector. If the scalar is less than one, we get a little bit smaller vector. So the scalar product of vector is always a vector. So these are all the properties of vectors. That's all what you have.